pageantry sash crown. Name it all. This is your pageant guru, Dr. Zed, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon to all of you. I am very, very excited because today is another episode on our YouTube channel because as what you have always been um, craving for and raving, you guys wanted to have this one-on-one -on -one interview with we have still a few girls on our list for interview. Of course, our main goal is to get to know them up close and personal. Aside from the glitz and the glam that we see on YouTube, on Facebook, and Instagram, we wanted to know the girls very, very well. And tonight, today, this afternoon, we are very, very honored to have with us one of the most charming, I must say, faces um, that has graced this year's edition. Everyone, please allow me in welcoming Patricia Bianca Tapia. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Dr. Zed. Thank you so much for having me today, this afternoon. Again, my name is Patricia Bianca Tapia, but many call me Bianca. And I'm really excited to be here so you guys can all get to know me a little bit more on a deeper level because I know how important that is apart from seeing all just like the beauty and the, you know, the outfits and the makeup. So I'm really excited. Get much of your time. I know you're very busy. So we'll get straight to the business so that all of okay. our subscribers would get to know you even better. So I, I would want to ask you, Miss Bianca, or Bianca rather, um, how has life been? Actually, I was working in the tech, tech field back in the United States uh, as a consultant working in data analytics. And immediately when I was proposed the opportunity to join me, I quit my job, flew to the Philippines, and I just felt like this is really my calling. I was so excited about it and it just really felt aligned with what I want to do in my life. And ever since being a part of this journey, I feel like things have been more clear to me. I've, I've gotten a sense of clarity and I really feel like this is where I am meant to be. Wow. So imagine the sacrifice <laughs> that you have to give um, just to be here. But I like the dedication that you've shown yeah. in this in this journey and uh, well, well i would i think i would also do the same whenever it feels like it's your calling and you're meant for something like this it's all about destiny with this journey so yeah. i like that you gave it a shot and now you're here and i want to ask you was this a childhood dream of yours to be uh to join us like in life we kind of just like things come to us and when we find our passion through trial and error, we keep doing that. And then at one point in my life, I wanted to showcase who I am. I wanted to show the world what I'm all about, my personality, like my beauty, and most of, especially what I can do for other people. But you know what? My favorite thing about it is that I really like that it makes me a better person, but not only does it make me a better person, but I feel that I'm also enabling others around me to become a better person. So I really think it's a two-way street where I'm being helped and I'm also helping others. And it's a beautiful thing, pageantry. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I must say, if I have a face like yours, I would always join beauty pageants having this kind of charm that you have. And there's no doubt about it. No denying you're one of the charm, charming faces that um, we've seen in this edition. How have you been preparing before the coronation night? As I reflect, I really think that it's all a mentality. For me, when the improvement that everyone talks about, the progression of how things develop, for me, it's a mentality, how you exude your confidence to the world and how, how sure you are of yourself. That's really what will be seen on stage. Because you can practice so much, you can prepare so much and sacrifice so much time, but it's really how you display yourself to other people and how you really stay true to being 100% in who you are and being that confident person that everybody needs is how you will be that ideal outcome that you want to be for yourself. That I, I can't stop, like I can't stop showing the world that like, you know, this is what I can do and this is what I will do for all of you. Wow, that is very inspiring. You trying to, you know, day by day, we try to um, adapt from the changes of the world and you trying to be a 
the better version of yourself each day. That is very, very uh, motivating to hear. What are you most um, happy about and most excited about all throughout the, the competition? I find my peak happiness when I'm um, partaking in the char charity events. I really like the charity events because I think that's the true essence of what being a pageant candidate is about and even a pageant winner because being a public figure is really important and a lot of people rely on you. A lot of people depend on you. And it is how you can inspire the larger community on a bigger level is that is what's most important because external beauty can only go a long way, but it's what you do for other people and how you can create that domino effect for other people to do the same is what matters most. And I just really enjoy giving back and um, feeling the love of the Filipino community and its people and just really creating those connections that will last a lifetime. You got this girl who is ready to <laughs> have her hands dirty and work in the charity and community because um, after all, aside from the beauty and the glam, is really a job to, to fulfill and knowing that you are ready and capable for that is really means something. So we have to watch out and look for you. Um, Bianca, we, wa we want to know on, on, on the other side of it, we want to know um, what is most unique about your story? I know a lot of you probably already know, and it may not seem like it, but I've really developed the skill of mouth reading or lip reading, as well as um, just putting words together so I can make sense of the sentences. With that being said, I was born two months early and one of the later parts that develop in the growth of a baby inside is your hearing. So my hearing did not develop as much as it should have. And um, as I continued to get older, it progressively got worse and I continued to fail the hearing tests at school. And that was something that really broke my heart because as a child, of course, you don't want to experience any type of setbacks or disabilities or be marginalized because you always want to fit in but I overcame it and I really think that we shouldn't let our insecurities or disabilities define who we are because we're so much more than that when you're able to realize that you can do anything and everything in this world despite your disabilities I think that's the most powerful thing that you can do because you can be an example for other people Wow, what a very inspiring story to, to, to tell, you know. Um, I know it was never easy, easy for you to um, live a, a very special life, at least, um, if that's the right term to describe it. But you sharing this kind of story and you trying to redefine what it means um, to be a person of who you are right now, that no setbacks, no hindrances can stop you from achieving your desires in life. This is... Um, very very heartfelt and i would i would i i salute you really for for <laughs> this kind you. of courage to know what is your life's biggest struggle so far and how did you overcome it yeah so apart from having a hearing impairment i think my current life struggle right now is something that i'm um currently encountering i am a filipino american so that comes with having a double identity, uh, my Filipino side and my American side. But it wasn't only till now, living in the Philippines, that I am able to realize how much deeply connected I am with my roots and how much more I can be connected to it. And being in my 20s, I think this is a time in my life where I really figure everything out and Rather than seeing it as an obstacle or a challenge, I see it as a growth opportunity to really discover who I am. And I think more than anything, I would love to spend more time here in the Philippines and continue working on the projects that I have planned out. It's different to come back home, get um, connected to your roots and your family. But know, Bianca, that we here uh, will be with you along the way, what, whichever your plan is, whether you want to stay here in the Philippines. We are ready to tour you around the Philippines and be part of your growing family. Now let's go to some um, other aspects of your thoughts about uh, in the competition per se. 
um, um, how do you think that social media changed today and how did it um, affect your journey? I think that it really is more of a positive thing to connect the two because without social media, it will be a little difficult to broadcast and spread the word about the social causes as well as the many activities that the pageantry is you know planning for its candidates i think social media is a really good platform if used correctly to raise awareness for a lot of things as well as for the ladies of the pageant to to uphold what they want to develop for themselves and for everyone around them so I, I only see positive things about the connection between the two. And I've definitely taken advantage of my social media platform to, to reach to the people and so that they can be connected with me. Right, right. Actually, um, that's how you use social media. It really depends on the person and how you would want um, to view social media and how you would want social media to take control of you or the other way around. So yes. knowing that you use it positively to connect your audience, to connect your fans, including your family, of course, abroad, this is something positive. Um, entry is something really positive. So I commend you for that. I want to ask you, do you think pageants nowadays are still relevant in our society? Well, there will always be people who are on the opposite, opposite side of the spectrum who may think that it's a negative impact. But of course, as someone that's a candidate, I do think that it has a positive impact on people. And I will always and put emphasis on the positivity of pageantry because I really think there's only so much that politicians can do. There's only so much that nonprofit organizations can do, but there is so much that pageant women can do for its people. And I think the more that we create groups and organizations in order, ex in order to expand to the people so that we can continue to inspire and make the world a better place, then why not? Why, why do we have to see it in a negative light? Because I, I don't understand that. I really think that pageantry only benefits so many people because it inspires so many people on a larger scale. And I think, I only hope that pageantry continues to go down that route. And I believe that it really will. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I also do believe as a pageant enthusiast that pageantry is really still relevant and will always be. And with women like you, of high caliber, empowered women who can raise their voices and be an inspiration to other people, especially through your story, is something that uh, will walk down the history and say that um, you guys can break barriers. And restrictions have been lifted already, and even transgenders were given um, inclusivity. What can you say about this um, huge change? I am always a big advocate for inclusivity, and I really, really am so happy about the changes that has been made to include Filipinos from all over the world, because I don't think that Filipinos are limited to only the Philippines. I think we are so much more than that, and I think really expanding the rules to including women from all, of, all over the world showcases even more what Filipinos are about. And it's that, you know, malasakit spirit, that bayanihan spirit of just being there for one another, being really creating that safe space to feel loved. And I feel that more than anything, being a Filipino American who is not someone that grew up in the Philippines. And I do see a positive direction in the I imagine them creating even more um, inclusive practices in the future maybe they won't allow they won't maybe they won't require uh, dual citizenship anymore and I really think it's what's in the heart of the candidate of how much they want to represent the Philippines and how strongly they will fight for it because it's really how you show that, how you show your efforts. And I think it's a beautiful thing that 
more and more the organization is becoming more inclusive and welcoming to all ages to different women across the world and you know opening to other genders i i think it really makes my heart so warm and happy that it is open to other women and lifting that prejudice off of other people true yeah yeah i have to agree it's a mic drop moment for you <laughs> it only goes to show that the world is becoming more accepting and more um inclusive as as we say all right Okay, now um, I want to go on a personal level. Um, if you could give a message to yourself, Bianca, you're young. Um, imagine my younger self as not the same person as who I am today. So, little Aika, I know that you are so afraid of the outside world and you feel rather you're in a bubble and that you can't talk to everyone around you, especially because you can't hear. Um, please know that you are so much more than that and everyone around you is the same on the inside as you. You have the capabilities to do anything you want to. Just set it in your mind that you can and you will because what you think is what you'll become. So be the strong, beautiful, amazing person that you are and I promise that you will follow and complete the dreams that you have been hoping for. I love you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, I'm sure that the little Aika before is so happy. She's uploading you right now um, of who you've become. And I want to quote unquote that you can and you will. You can. And yeah. In my life, the biggest challenge that I've encountered is definitely being hearing impaired. And I was always afraid to speak up and stand up for myself. But it was only through joining um, student body positions and being the class president and doing speeches in front of 2,000 people and joining the cheerleading squad was I only able to accumulate the confidence that I had inside that I, that I unleash to the world and for them to see. And it was only overcoming these challenges that I was able to overcome the fear. And that's why to this day, I don't see challenges and obstacles as something to fear, but rather something more like, bring it on. Okay, I can do this because I know after this, I will be a better version of who I am. Wow, my drop moment for Miss Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, um, yeah, we can see we can see the determination and uh, I really don't know the exact words to tell you but I, I'm, I'm really I look up to you so much on how you are overcoming this this type of um, obstacles that you see but I, I really don't see it that much because you have been really soaring and um, constantly um, adapting to the world and you're constantly um, thriving to be you know the best version of who you can be as a yes. woman most iconic question of all i'm sure everybody's waiting for that because i will never take no for an answer i will always continue to fight for other people it brings me joy it brings me inner peace that i am able to help a lot of other people not only with disabilities but everyone. And I only hope to uplift the universe to be the best version of themselves because I am a firm believer that we are all in this together. And I, I know I can do this and I know that I will. Hey everyone, aloha. Again, this is Patricia Bianca Tapia. Thank you so much for listening to my interview with Dr. Zed. It was a pleasure having a conversation with him. And as well as just, you know, letting you guys all know a little bit about me. I know that's important. I'm really thankful and grateful for all the love that you guys give to me. It really keeps me going. So thank you again and mahalo. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening or morning. I don't know when you guys are watching this, but I love you guys. And mwah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, um, Bianca. Um, all I can say is that you are, you have brought one of the most inspiring stories of this year's edition. 
um, it might seem as an obstacle to to you and to many facing not only your beauty but also your courage and determination and striving. All the best and all the luck. Um, may the spirits of God and all on that night for you. And um, we, uh, I personally, from my team, we are very, very thankful for this opportunity that you have given us. Maraming salamat so much. So if you Marami haven't subscribed, them. <laughs> yeah, to our subscribers, if you haven't subscribed in yet, um, please do so by subscribing at Dr. Z Pageant Guru. You can follow us on our social media platforms, Dr. Z underscore Pageant Guru on Instagram and TikTok. So this has been your Pageant Guru, Dr. Z, together with Miss Patricia Bianca Tapia saying good night and God bless us all. Thank you.